Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi Masechet Baba Batra. We are up to Perek Bet Mishnah Tet. Today's Mishnah Yot should be Le'elu Nishmat Neria Ben Svetlana Ranbai Veliao Ben Burcha Yisraelov Chana Ben Miriam Sasson Ben Rayan Yeshua Ben Shifra Menuchatam Began Eden Amen and Avdi Ben Chaim Lechaim and the Refuah Shelema of Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa Betoch Shah Chole Yisrael and Achlama Mera Binamin Or Tzion Chai Ben Dvora. The Mishnah continues to list things that must be distanced 50 amot from a city. Malchikin at the Nevelot, Veta Kivarot, Veta Busiki, Minayir Hamishim Ama. We distance dead animals. This refers to the bodies of dead animals that were left outside the city to rot or be eaten by dogs. Graves, this applies even to a single grave and certainly to multiple graves or a cemetery. And a tannery, at least 50 amot from the nearest city. Since these things give off foul smells, which the wind will carry into the city, they must be kept at least 50 amot away, so that the smells will disperse before they reach the city. An additional restriction that applies to a tannery, and osin busiki el el one may not set up a tannery except to the east of the city. A tannery produces a great deal of foul odor all the time. For this reason, it is not enough to distance a tannery from a city, it must also be located in a place where the wind will be unlikely to carry smells into the city. This time it therefore holds that a tannery must be set up to the east of the city because the eastern wind, the wind that blows from the east toward the west, is generally mild and warm and does not carry odors. This additional restriction does not apply to dead animals or graves whose odors fade away relatively quickly. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Rabbi Akiva whoever says, he may set it up on any side outside the city except for its western side. Rabbi Akiva holds that a 50 amma distance is enough to disperse even the foul odor of a tannery, and he therefore permits one to set up a tannery on any side of the city except the west, provided that he is at least that it is at least 50 amot away. He forbids setting up a tannery to the west of the city for a different reason. Since people in much of Eretz Yisrael pray facing the west, that side of a city is considered the place of the Divine Presence. It would therefore be improper to set up a tannery on the west side, even if it is 50 amot away from the city. Umarchik Hamishim Ama, again Rabbi Akiva, who says he may set it up on any side outside of the city except for its western side. Umarchik Hamishim Ama, and he must distance it 50 amot from the city in any event. And that is end of Mishnah Tet. The Rav does tell us, Rabbi Akiva, the Lecha does not follow the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Mishnah Yud lists items that a person must keep away from specific other properties of his neighbor. The items listed here are each harmful only to one other specific item and therefore the restrictions apply only when those other specific things are already in place in the neighbor's property. Marchikin at Mishra Mina Yarak, one must distance flax soaking pools from his neighbor's vegetable patches. Veta Kirishin Mina Bitsalim, cress, a type of herb from his neighbor's onions. And mustard from his neighbor's bees. The first item in each of these pairs will cause damage to the second item if it is placed too close to that item. Flax must be soaked before it is made into linen. The water in which the flax is soaked becomes very foul and can seep into the ground, causing harm to vegetables that are planted nearby. Cress can damage growing onions by causing them to lose their sharp taste. And if mustard is planted near a beehive, the bees will feed on the nectar produced by the mustard plants, which will make the honey they produce sharp and bitter. Also, the bees will eat the sharp mustard seeds, and this will cause them to consume their own honey. In each of these three cases, the person whose item is causing the damage, the owner of the flax, cress, or mustard, must keep his item away so it will not cause damage. Although these items will not cause damage immediately, and therefore placing flax into a soaking pool or planting cress or mustard is not active damage, this Tana forbids a person to place such items on one's own property, even if they will cause damage eventually to his neighbor's item. Therefore, the owner of the damaging item must distance it from his neighbor's item. The Mishnah does not specify how far away these items must be kept because the distance varies in each case. The owner of the item must distance it as far as is necessary to prevent it from causing damage. The Mishnah now cites a different view. Rabbi Yossi matir bechardal, but Rabbi Yossi permits placing mustard near bees. Rabbi Yossi is of the opinion that not only does mustard, that not only does mustard harm bees, 
but bees also harm mustard. Therefore, the owner of the mustard may claim, instead of you telling me to keep my mustard away from your bees, you should keep your bees away from my mustard. According to Rabbi Yossi, the bees damage the mustard by eating it, as much as the mustard damages the bees' honey. The Tanakam, however, maintains that the bees do not damage the mustard, as whatever they eat grows back quickly. But again, according to Rabbi Yossi, the owner of the mustard can claim, I am not required to distance my bees from your mustard if you do not distance your mustard from my bees. Right? So the owner, again, so Rabbi Yossi says the owner of the mustard may claim, instead of you telling me to keep my mustard away from your bees, you should keep your bees away from my mustard and vice versa. I am not required to distance my bees from your mustard if you do not distance your mustard from my bees. The Gemara on page 18b in Babata explains that in truth, Rabbi Yossi disagrees with the entire premise of the Tanakama that a person is forbidden to place an item or perform an action in his own property because it will eventually cause damage to a neighbor. In Rabbi Yossi's view, distancing is required only where one will otherwise be immediately and actively damaging his neighbor. For example, digging a pit too close to the pit of a neighbor where the digging immediately and actively weakens the wall of the neighbor's pit or if one invades a neighbor's privacy. The potential for damage does not create an obligation to keep away in Rabbi Yossi's view. Therefore, Rabbi Yossi himself would also permit soaking flax near vegetables and planting cress near onions since damage will not occur until after time has passed. He mentions only mustard and bees in the Mishnah because his intent was to make the point that even the Tanakama who does require distancing even to avoid eventual, dam eventual damage, should agree that there is no reason to distance mustard from bees. For according to Rabbi Yossi, bees and mustard damage each other, and therefore neither owner can be forced to keep his items distant from that of the other. And the Rab does tell us, Rabbi Yossi, the Rab does follow the opinion of Rabbi Yossi. And that is the end of today's Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.